Well, I first met uh, Ananda Devi. She was already a writer because I had uh, read some of her short stories when I was in France. And during one of my stays in Mauritius, I had the privilege to um, uh, to share a meal with her, with her family. And I, I really was uh, very much uh, impressed by the elegance and the, <clears throat> and the, uh, the culture of her family. When we, we grew up in, um, so when I was five and my brother was three, and I remember so her teaching us to, to read and write. She wasn't necessarily the disciplinarian in the house, that was probably more my dad. Um, but certainly, you know, like all mum had this, uh, she has this uh, quiet, strong power that, you know, you don't want to, to mess with too much. It's like we have met since 2000. Donc ça fait 22 ans notre relation littéraire s'est construite avec des échanges nombreux. Ça avait commencé tous les jours nous nous écrivons au sujet de la littérature. Ensuite, nous nous sommes mis à lire l'un l'autre tous nos manuscrits. Donc Dananda Devi, je peux dire que j'ai lu des textes qui ne sont pas sortis, qui ne sortiront jamais. De moi, elle a lu des textes qui ne sont pas encore sortis ou qui ne sortiront jamais. Uh, she's a great novelist. She writes short stories. She's a great poet. Um, every single thing she touches um, is, um, is talented. And uh, what I admire is uh, her freedom. She knows what she has to do and she does it. Uh, she never complains. She works a lot. If you can tell by the number of uh, the books she publishes uh, every year and she never complains and she looks so serene and so calm and at the same time she's so powerful. She has built a series of uh, tremendous and moving literary images of the female experience in its negative, most often traumatic dimensions. But she always treats them, yes, with great empathy, with great sensitivity at the time. It, you know, she's not writing about these things in order to shock or to either get some, make the headlines in a way. She's sort of very sensitive to um, alien, alienated, um, ostracized members of society and so on, and draws out these very, hard topics but the woman condition is is a, new, a universal subject you know how they're and often her, her main characters are are, are parias or cast aside from society and that, that's a reflection of how women are still considered in you know in the modern world still in 2022 and and i think because that's something that's universal across cultures that will resonate not you know with, with everyone with men and women who've observed this, who've seen this, who've experienced this. But she has to see Mauritius through uh, the crystal of, of her small island and uh, of, her, of her education. And so she deals with all those problems, problems for the developing countries, for the poor people around the world. Ah, uh, yes, many things make her books very special. For one thing, um, she is interested in language and the French language. I think she really transforms the French language, adds a lot of interesting uh, creative ways of using the French language. Alors c'est la brutalité, la violence dont elle parle, mais euh, habillée d'un style exquis, d'un style, euh, d'un style euh, très fin, euh, très métaphorique. I have to confess that I admired most uh, her stylistic mastery, uh, the stylistic mastery of her prose, which uh, harmonizes the contradictory levels of uh, literary representation. Uh, I mean, lyrical and naturalism, violence and delicate beauty, the power of dominant languages, with the language of minorities. 
in the same sentence, she's uh, able to um, translate anger and uh, violence and at the same time, tenderness and sweetness and joy. And, uh, and also she's really funny. Uh, I mean, in her book also. Um, and, and so that artistic talent makes her a quintessential great writer to my mind. I think she is one of the greatest contemporary writers in the French language. I think I, I, I have read everything that she has published and uh, I'm, I, I very much admire her as a writer since the beginning of her career. She's, she's a prolific writer. She has been writing now for a long time and she continues to write and to produce at a, an impressive um, rate, but always at high quality as well. She has two faces, in fact, of, in, her, in her personality. Elle dit souvent, euh, comme Proust, comme Marcel Proust, euh, qu'il euh, y a deux, deux Ananda. Euh, L'une Ananda, c'est elle que nous fréquentons, qui est très polie, très affable, euh, très, je m'excuse de ce mot, très sage, voilà, très bien élevée, qui ne, ne, ne ferait pas de mal à une mouche. Et euh, euh, de l'autre côté, il y a ce que Proust appelle le moi créateur. Alors, le moi biographique, c'est ce que je viens d'évoquer. Le moi créateur, c'est-à-dire, c'est le moi profond, le moi que l'écrivain connaît, comme ce diamond de Socrate, qui s'active comme le diamond de Socrate au moment de la création. Voilà. Et c'est très intéressant de voir comment ces deux tendances, euh, euh, disons, euh, coexistent, euh, s'équilibrent et euh, donnent matière à, une, à un tissu artistique très riche dans l'œuvre d'Ananda Devi. Mais aussi, la façon dont elle écrit, c'est une façon très poétique de écrire. Donc, c'est un sujet incroyablement difficile, vraiment really inconfortable. Mais elle est capable de, kind of, je pense, focus sur ce qui est vraiment painful, ce qui est vraiment matter. And still take the reader with her. You know, the reader doesn't look away, but she's able to take everyone with her and looking at it with eyes wide open and not shying away from it. And I think that's why that resonates with everyone. And it's not, it's not in everyone's ability to be able to do that. Her sort of reception has moved correspondingly from being a Mauritian writer, a francophone writer, a woman writer, um, and she really is, I think, now genuinely and rightly recognized as a writer. Dans tous nos livres, il y a une allusion de l'un au livre de l'autre. Moi, par exemple, dans Hermina, je consacre un chapitre à Soupir d'Ananda Devi. Ça, c'était en 2003. Et puis, en 2014, je publie un livre, La couleur de l'écrivain, en trois parties. La troisième partie est entièrement consacrée à Nanda Devi. J'ai intitulé cette partie Éloge de la Sarienne. La Sarienne faisant référence aux sari qu'elle porte souvent pour des événements littéraires. In the various, um conferences and book signings and things that are where I have met her. You know, she always takes the time as whilst, you know, walking the room, meeting, shaking hands, meeting people. She always has that time to sort of spend a bit of time with me, with, with individuals to share a little bit of gossip or an aside or something. There's a, a you know, a little bit, there's the humor there as well, a very sort of human touch. Um, and also she's quite personally, so when, when she talks in her interventions or interviews, you know, she comes across as, as very confident. Uh, obviously she's extremely knowledgeable about what she's talking about her, the subjects are important for her, but actually in private, she's quite, um, uh, she's fairly shy as a person. Um, so that's something that maybe probably doesn't come across when you, when you see, you see Ananda speaking. Um, speaking in, in public. She's a lovely person. She's the, every time I see her, I'm so happy because she's a, she's a really uh, generous and kind woman. What I appreciate more in her, apart from the generosity, from her kindness, from her, uh, the smile she always has on her face, which is something uh, so pleasant to see, especially 
when when we know how difficult is life for the the people in Mauritius. Um, I like very much her sincerity. She's a very sincere person. She never lies. She always says the truth. I think she's also very funny. She can, you know, she can make jokes and laugh about that. Uh, I remember having dinners with her. She appreciates good food, good wine. So she's a very uh, wonderful, personable individual with whom it is a pleasure to collaborate uh, on a project such as that course we taught together. I think it was how how she is. It's more about how she is with with my grandson. Oh, not my grandson, my son, her grandson. And every time he spends time with him, I've just realized that his, his language has increased by a lot more. He knows a lot more words. He has a lot more ideas that he can express. It. And I'm just I'm just like amazed every time he just spends a, a, a week or two weeks with her and that happens. And that's just magical. And also seeing how much love she has for him, that's also something that, that touches me quite a lot. My ambition um, is really to make her known everywhere in this planet because she's a, she's a very brilliant, intelligent and uh, talented writer and uh, I think it's a, a gift and I feel really lucky uh, to be our editor. The, the whole thing, the whole package of Amanda Devi that is uh, that is the success and how she's managed to stay sort of faithful to herself and to her beliefs whilst becoming achieving the success that she deserves. Also, I guess that what you were talking about is the reach that her book has, you know, all the way, not just in the nation, but coming all the way to, to Poland, you know, to an extent where a, such a prestigious institution like yours giving her a, an honorary award like this is i think it, it's a credit to the universe universality of her work and how it's touched people and that will, that, that will also say is one of her biggest success there it, the values of the polish people are very strong and uh, the value of the mauritian people are strong too so it's a good thing that they they would meet during this celebration of mrs ananda Devi. She is still creative, awarded with many excellent awards, translated into several languages. She has been among the candidates for, for the Nobel Prize for several years. I think it's more and more than enough for this uh, title of uh, honorary uh, doctorate.